You know, we're entering into, uh, you, you come to this time of the year, and you always make a little run, you know, between uh, Christmas and the New Year, and you start thinking about this New Year that's coming, and what it's going to look like, and what it's going to feel like. And, uh, of course, we don't know, and we have faith. We put confidence in the King of Kings. We put confidence in the head of the church. He said the gates of hell would not prevail against the church. And so we believe that. And we believe that he's an overcomer. There's nothing that goes on in this world that God doesn't know about. And he knows about it in advance. And I really believe with all of my heart that we are in a time, a season, of great um, warning, if you will. And that great warning is to prepare us and not so much us, but we, if we've met Jesus Christ, you're about as prepared as you can get. Amen. Now you can do certain things. You can do certain details as you see the day approaching, but the world is not ready for what's coming. The Bible says that day will come on them unawares and it doesn't come on us unawares. We have knowledge, we know. And if we're perceptive, we know. And if we don't know, it's because we don't know the scripture. Jesus said, you do err not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. So if you don't know, it's because, you know, there's a, forgive the way that this word, it's, a, it's an ugly word, but it's an accurate word, uh, ignorance. Now, ignorance is not stupid. Uh, ignorance is just, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of things that I'm ignorant of. I don't consider myself a dumb person. I don't consider myself a stupid person. But there's a lot of things in life I don't know. And a lot of those things I don't want to know. You can't know everything. You just know the things that pertain to what you do. But what God does does pertain to you. And so there should be a desire to know what God's doing, what God's saying. And there should be a pursuit of that. Now the truth is out there. If you want it. And a lot of people won't seek the truth. They don't want the truth because the truth is a problem. Uh, everybody wants the truth about somebody else. You know, that's what gossip's all about. Now, it might not have much truth in it, but, you know, we don't have to have a whole lot of truth. We just need to have something we can talk about. That's right, Pastor, preach it. As long as he's preaching it about somebody else. You know, so we want the truth as long as it's over yonder, you know. But when the truth gets too close to home, we got a little, you know, our fur will rise up. You ever seen a dog when they get a little irritated with another dog and that fur stands up on their back? Sometimes we get a little fur on our back too. Like one guy said, if, 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 you're rubbing the cats fur the wrong way, turn the cat around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. And so there's truth in that, you know, but there's an awakening that God's promised us. And I believe it's on, but um, the message today, the awakening, can you see it? How hard are you looking and where are you looking for it? Amen. And so a lot of what's going on in society is misinformation, bad information, bogus information, skewed information, half truth, partial truth, some not true at all. Some is outright a lie. But the truth is there if you want to find it, but you might have to look for it. Because we live in a censorship world right now. And a lot of what you hear is not what is. And a lot of what you're being led to believe is not what is. Half-truths, made-up truths, so-called truths. But to them, it's true. But to the world who's not discerning, and the word discerning is an important word. We have the power of discernment within us. To discern is to see beyond what is necessarily visible. There's a lot of things that are visible that are phony. 
that's what sleight of hand is. That's what uh, magic's all about, you know, make you look at this while we do this. Paint an illusion, paint a smoke screen. You didn't really see what you thought you saw in the, you saw something else. You didn't see the truth. Oh yeah, I did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I really did see the truth. You just don't want me to say what I saw. You just want to censor me if I say it. Doesn't change the reality of it any. You just want me to go along with your narrative. And if I say anything in conflict with your narrative, then there's something wrong with me to hell with you. I said that exactly the way I meant it too. That wasn't a misplaced word because that's how I feel about it because that's where it comes from. When you bury the truth and hide the truth and refuse to allow the truth to be stated, that comes from another place and it's not heaven. So send it back where it came from. Amen. So there is an awakening, but can you see it? Are you aware of it? Now, we're going to take that and develop that a little bit. All right? Look at your neighbor and say, there's an awakening. And look back at them and say, don't miss it. <laughs> Amen. I can't believe how blunt I am. I don't work at it. It just happens. Isaiah 60, verse number 1. But it starts out good. Arise, shine. That's positive. Say, I'm arising, I'm arising. And, I'm and I'm shining. Well, that's what it says to do. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now, that's a great promise to claim right there. It really is. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now, notice this conflict and contrast right here. So you have a light that comes, you have a light that's shining, you have a glory that's revealed, but right in the middle of that, darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Now I believe that we have slipped into what I would call dark times. I believe there's a diabolical evil and evil people that are working to do nefarious things to the human race. And to the plan of God and to the God of the Bible and to the truth of Scripture. I believe that they are working a scheme, a plan, plan from long ago. It's not, it's not new. It's just now coming to the surface more and more and more. But they've been working this plan for a long, long time. And they methodically have rolled it out on not just America, but on this world. And America and the Constitution and people like you are the only thing that steps, stands between them and accomplishing their purpose. That's why they hate you, because you are their problem. And the God of the Bible is their problem, because they're not God, but they think they are. And they want eternal life in another way. Artificial intelligence. Computer downloads. Brain links, chips, you name it. Transhumanism, you go down the list. They're trying to reach heaven another way, but God said there's no way but one. And you come through him or you don't go. So all these are enemies of God, make no mistake about it. They're not just people with a different view, not people with just a different opinion. These are inspired by hell and enemies of God. Is that clear? Can I make it any clearer? So don't misunderstand. So, well, how do you pray for these leaders? I pray that they fail. The Bible says if you bless them in their process, that you're a partaker of their evil deeds. I don't bless their process. I curse their process. I have no tolerance for that. My patience is way too thin for that. I'm fed 
up. We have a new, we have a new this. Lock us down again. You can't have a Merry Christmas. That would be anti their plan. Well, they and their plan will soon be in hell. And don't forget it. We win, not them. Amen. I just get one pass at this. I don't, you know, it's just no sense beating around the bush. I'm praying for boldness, but I don't know. It says, behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. That's exactly what's on now. But in the middle of that, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. For the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of, his, of, of thy rising. Lift up thine heads round about and see all they that gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Doesn't say we're losing, does it? Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now, of course, that's talking a lot to the Jews, but it's also talking to the church. In the Bible, you find there are two elects of God. There's the elect of the natural seed, and that's the nation Israel and all of that over there. But there's the elect, that spiritual seed, that is the church, that Invisible, born again group of Holy Ghost filled people. And we're the ones with the power, not them. You just got to exercise it and know it and use the power you got. You have more power on your knees than they have with all the armies of the world. It says, The multitude of camels shall cover thee, and the dromedaries, that's talking about abundance. And the dromedaries of Midian, Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come and shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. And so this is talking about nations flowing into God and nations with their abundance coming to God. Now, of course, we know that there are times, sequential times and prophetic times that are coming where these things will be seen. There's a there's a thing that we call the millennium. Some have called it the golden age or the time of peace on earth, goodwill actually toward men. The time when the sword shall be, bre be beaten into plowshares and the spears into pruning hooks. That day's coming. It's written on, on that scripture is written on the front of the UN. But they got a different plan. They want it without the coming of the Lord because he's their problem. But it won't happen until the king gets here. But he's coming soon enough. And all their attempts and all their, all their types and shadows and all the things that they want to do in ways to, to delude and dilute the things of God, they'll none come to pass. So there's a contrast between good and evil, between light and darkness, and you see it. And that's going on in the earth today. That darkness has come. But in the midst of that darkness, there's a light that shines. Make no mistake, the world is drifting deeper and deeper into darkness in a variety of ways. Human behavior, what people tolerate, what they're willing to do. Some have said, well, it's been this way all along, never been like this. No, Jesus said that there, there's a time coming when it will be worse than any time that's ever been on the earth. And he has to repair it. Well, we're drifting into it. We're not fully in it, but we're drifting toward it. Some said, well, I believe it's going to get better. Well, you're mistaken. There may be flashes and momentary flashes of good and light, but this world is drifting in the darkness. The Bible says men's hearts would fail them for looking at the things that are coming on the earth. So there's an anticipation of what's coming. And it's so diabolically evil in its design that some people can't stand the pressure. But you and I, we can. We're the relief valve for the world, the hope of the gospel, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the relief valve for the world. So be of good cheer. 
There's tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer, Jesus said. I've overcome the world. <laughs> so we have one that overcomes. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So in the middle of the darkness, there is a light. The light is the people of God. The Bible says Jesus is the great light. We're the lesser light. We're a reflected light, if you will. We have the light in us, so it's not fully reflective. I mean, it's actual but we're the small light. He's the great light. Amen. But we are the light of the world. He's the light of the world. But through us, the church, the people of God, his light radiates to humanity. And so the light is the people of God. It's the word of God. The word of God is the light of God. God sends his word into darkness. The light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That word is light. And it sheds a truth that even though these truth haters and these truth hiders want to expound in the way they do, his light still prevails. They'll never stop him. They've tried smart men, wise men, so-called, have down through the ages tried to stop him, stamp him out, make him disappear and go away. Well, they're dead. He's still here. Mm -hmm. His word still lives today. So the light is the people of God, the word of God, and especially the uncompromisingly righteous. The uncompromised Christian is a real threat to their plan. Believe me. Amen. So there is an awakening in progress. But can you see it? Or are you blinded by the misinformation, the bad information? The magician's trick to get you to look the wrong way when you need to be looking the right way. So much bad information, misinformation. Daniel chapter 12, verse number one. In the time shall... And at that time Michael stand, shall Michael stand up and the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to this same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And so here you have this again contrast in play. It says there's a time of trouble that's never been like this. Are we there? Not quite. That's actually during what we refer to as that seven-year period called the tribulation. We're not quite in that. But all the signs are leading us into it. All the signs are showing the way. You've heard me say this, and I think it bears repeating. I just saw a news story. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. And I saw in, in, in uh, Switzerland. I believe it was Switzerland. Yeah. And, uh, or Sweden, one of the two. Scandinavian country. Um, but the people are taking the chip to be their new uh, passport. You know, their, this thing that's going on. If I say it, I get censored, so i got to be careful what I say. That's just what I'm talking about, though. But, they're, uh, you know, it was a card, but now the card doesn't go far enough, so now it's the chip. I told you, I told you, that that was coming. Yeah. I warned you a while back about this. This thing's serious, guys. And you say, well, is that the mark of the beast? No, but it's a type. See, that's what I'm saying. There are warning signs everywhere. Are you listening? You say, well, why doesn't God just come in and stop it all? Because he wants people to wake up. He wants people to awaken and see it for what it really is. You heard about these things. Now are you awake? You're in the middle of it. I hope you care. Well, we want it to go back the way it was. Well, it's not. Now I'm not going to say it can't get better because the light does shine in this darkness. So I'm not going to say there's no good out there, but I'm saying this, if you think it's going back to what it was, you are kidding yourself. That's not going to happen. And everything that can be shaken is being shaken. 
so that that which cannot be shaken may remain. Are you shakable? Are you strong? Which are you? But you have to choose it. Not time to give up, not time to quit, not time to throw in the towel, not time to say enough. It's time to stand up, be counted, be strong, be faithful. It's time to be who you were created and called to be. God didn't fill millions and billions of people around this world with the Holy Spirit so we could lay down to the pressures of society. We talk about being full of the Holy Spirit. Well, then let's act like it. He didn't fill you with the Holy Spirit so you sing fast songs in church. Among other things. Now, I'm okay with all that. But there's a bigger reason. You understand what I'm saying? And so here we go. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's resurrection. Resurrection of the just, the unre- resurrection of the unjust, resurrection of the righteous, resurrection of the wicked. Two resurrections mentioned in Scripture. That's what it's referring to right there. And they that be wise. Well, I hope that's you. Is that you? Yes. Say, that's me. that's me. Well, don't admit it if it's not you. And the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given to you. So if you're not wise, ask. That's how you get wise. By asking for wisdom. Amen. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness shall as the stars forever and ever. And that's talking about the, this ingathering of souls and us becoming a part of that ingathering of souls. And it says those of us who are a part of that harvest. It doesn't say that that light that comes upon you diminishes at the end even of your own life. It says it shines forever throughout eternity on you. That glory does not pale or go away. Amen. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now this word knowledge right here, you you, you know what knowledge is. I mean, if you need to know something, where do you find it? YouTube. (laughs) Or maybe in the Bible. But, But there are some things that the Bible doesn't tell me how to do. How do you cook a roast? Well, if you don't know, go to YouTube. It'll tell you. You might not like the one you, you know, find another recipe. I didn't like that one. I want another one. I want with carrot. I want one with carrots and potatoes in it. I don't want that other one. I want that one. So I got to hunt another recipe. I'm just saying that to be funny, get your attention. But anytime you need to, I was working on my bathtub not too long ago. The stopper in the bathtub didn't work right. And I couldn't figure that thing out. What in the hell in the world does this thing work? You think you could figure out a stopper, but it wasn't that straightforward, you know? And I thought, I don't, it had fallen down in there and I didn't know how to get it out. And if I can't get it out, you know, you can't, you know, let the water out. So how do I find out? You too. I found out right away. It took me about two minutes after I knew what to do. So we pursue knowledge. And some of that's not as important as other. Biblical, scriptural, godly knowledge is so much more important than earthly knowledge. Amen. So we know what knowledge is. Knowledge means revelation. We need a revelation. We need to know how. We need to know something. It means insight. It means wisdom. Now, wisdom and knowledge are not exactly the same, but they're very, very closely related. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Amen. You may go to a simulator and learn how to fly a plane, but I'd rather have somebody that's done it in real life, in real time. Wouldn't you? Yeah. It means the ability to see. So when it talks about knowledge, it means the ability to see. Now that's what he's talking about here. He said in the last days, knowledge 
shall increase. Is it talking about the great scientific knowledge that we're being exposed to, the technology that we're being exposed to? All that's knowledge, and it's, some of it's beneficial. Some of it is really, really dangerous, very, very dangerous, you know? But it means that knowledge shall increase. That's a part of it. But it also means revelation shall increase. See, I believe a lot of what's going on in the earth right now is that scripture being fulfilled. I believe that what we see, the things that we see right before us, that they tell us, oh, you didn't really see that. Oh, you don't really know. You just don't have the full information. Well, I have enough to know you're a dirty liar. You are a lying <laughs> Satan servant. I could have said it another way, but uh, you know. So it means to have understanding. It means to know. It, to be, it means to become aware. It means to learn the facts, to educate or recognize. You can go on and on and on with these words. You get it. When the Bible says knowledge shall increase, we put it over here in our great universities, our great medical centers, the great scientists that are behind so many discoveries and all that. We think about it as, as, as that, and not, that's true, but it's not the full truth. See, I believe that what we have going on right now is a great sign. I believe that what we see in society right now, the absolute diabolical, filthy, evil that you see going on in society right now is a revelation of what's coming. And if you're smart, you'll take the warning. You'll see it for what it is. But often the world can't seem to see it. That's why they need your help. You can't be the full exposure of the truth. You have a little bit of truth that you can give to a few people. But the right word at the right time, the right drop, may change their whole outlook. When we understand as a society, folks, for at least, at least, at least the last 50 years, we've been lied to in spades. At so many levels and in so many ways, it's unimaginable. And when you begin to discover, hey, maybe they weren't telling me the truth, it begins to open a whole set of things. And you begin to think, what? And you begin to see these people for the, for the characters that they are. You have global players that want to control this world. And they've been manipulating circumstance and people and events and false flag events and, and dropping all sorts of things on society and then blaming it on the conservatives, blaming it on the Christians, blaming it on you second amenders, amendmenters. You're the problem. Well, you can have free speech as long as it's my speech. But you can't have free speech if it's what you want to say because we'll censor you. We'll take your right to speak from you and you'll like it and you'll be happy. And we'll, we'll take your possessions from you and you'll be happy. And we'll take everything from you at the gas pump and other places that you haven't owned and hold dear and you'll be happy. And we'll put you under the, subser the, the servitude of another country and another, another nation and we'll make it out of you, but you'll be happy. No, I won't. Quit lying to me. Don't take the gospel from me, the freedom to preach the gospel from me, and then tell me it's for my good. We'll murder babies by the millions and tell you it's right. And if you say anything about it, you're narrow-minded. You're bigoted. Because everybody has a right to choice except you. You understand? Now see, that's the society that we live in. So we lived our lives where what's really the truth has been covered up. Or you only get a smattering or a smidgen of the truth. I just saw that the uh, information of what's in the 
will not be released for 55 years. We'll wonder why we need that long. Because everybody that's culpable will be dead and gone. And probably a whole bunch of who they killed that could sue them, they're dead and gone too. Well, you're supposed to be okay with that. I'm not okay with you, lying bunch. I'm not okay with you at all. And if you think I'm laying down, you got the wrong guy. It ain't going to happen. I don't only got one pass at life, and I might as well make all the noise I can. Amen. Amen. So they cover up through propaganda, through fake news, through controlled narratives through a barrage of lies, through half-truths, innuendos, through censorship and truth that's not allowed to be stated. Evil is called good, good's called evil. Media bias. We only report the stories we want to. And the rest you better go find on your own. That's why you need to get another source for news. And if you think it's the so-called conservative news that are the big names... That is just a pacifying news that is as, they are as libelous and as much liars as the others. And they're all in the same bed together. And you better be a free thinker and you better get your information because it is out there. And if you want it bad enough, you'll go get it and I'm not going to get it for you. You got to do your own. So we're in a season of revelation because the lies are beginning to be obvious. When we have a leader that can't read a teleprompter, I'm sorry, it's pitiful to me. But if you think that man's running this country, you, you want to buy the Brooklyn Bridge? But there's somebody running it. And I hate to tell you, it probably not as even even as in your country. Why do our great sports venues have to yield to countries, governments, so they can sell their tennis shoes? Why can't, a, why can't a, a, a pro athlete say anything without being taken out of his sport? Why, why, why can't you say anything about a male that competes as a female? Because you're wrong if you do. No, I'm not wrong. They're wrong. Well, we need to live and let live. You want to live your way, but you don't want to let me live. So don't tell me about live and live, let live. Get off my donkey. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Amen. So we're in a season of revelation. We're in a time of truth. We're in a time of exposure of evil. When the Bible says knowledge shall increase, that's what we're talking about. We're in the time of the revelation. And there's a signpost warning, warning, warning. If you don't know God, you need to now. And if you're a child of God, you need to be living this thing now. It's a time for every believer to find the truth for themselves just because the majority says it, so-called majority, does not make it so. Just because you heard it on some cable news outlet does not mean it's the truth. And just because you read it in print somewhere doesn't make it so. The news narrative is as controlled as any other. Journalism is a lost art. 
There is no such thing now as investigative journalism. If you want the truth, you better get it somewhere else. Or you are as much deceived as the masses. But child of God, it says that knowledge shall be increased. So if you want to know it, you can. But you got to choose to know. And you got to dig it out. And you got to want it the same way you want a breath of air. You got to want it. And if you don't want it that badly, you're, if you're preoccupied with social media, or you're preoccupied with all this, you, you, you don't know it. You don't know it. You got to get unpreoccupied with the world and the stuff, and you got to pursue the truth because it is available if you want it. And so we have to be responsible for our own decisions. Our leadership is not necessarily correct, whether it be political leaders, spiritual leaders, leaders in media, certainly Hollywood. If you think that's who you get your information from, it's not coming out of Nashville either, guys. You can have your singers that you idolize or whatever you want to do. If you think the truth's coming out of there, you're kidding yourself. All that conservative stuff that used to be a part of our culture is non-existent. So it's a time of great deception. Lie. No, no, I'm not talking about everybody. So when I say those things, that's not everybody, but you still have conservatives. But I'm telling you, by and large, the things that have been bought into are in conflict with truth. Because it's money. Do you know, do you know the word sorcery in the Bible? Do you know what the Greek word for that is? Pharma. When you have more lobbyists for big pharma in Washington, D.C., than you have representatives of the people and you have this that has made them more money than you could count in 10 lifetimes the word sorcery is not in there by accident control the masses through big pharma the bible told you that was coming and give you one more That'll fix you. What are you going to do next time? Keep rolling them out. And let the sheeple follow suit. Or stand up and think for once in your life. You are being controlled, manipulated, used and abused and the only one that can stop it is you knowledge is increased to the level if we're still ignorant it's by personal choice Merry Christmas am I doing okay all right, all right. Jesus' words, Mark 13, verse 19. It says, For in those days shall be affliction, such as were not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And so Jesus said, you know, there's time coming that, that it's going to be worse than it's ever been. Now, we're not in that time yet, but we're watching the forerunner of it. You understand? This is a sign. And except the Lord has shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he has shortened the days. And so God said this thing's going to get so bad that the whole human race will be wiped out if I don't intervene. It's not human intervention that will stop it. It's the intervention of God. And so don't misunderstand anything I'm saying here. This warfare is not between a political party, two parties, or two countries. 
This is a war between good and evil, and make no mistake about it. Get it right down where the rubber hits the road. This is between God and Satan, and you're caught in the middle of it, and you better choose which side you're on. And it's nothing short. This is the conflict of the ages for the existence, listen, of the human race and a planet. And let me tell you what stands between it. Because if the United States falls, the rest of the world is gone. That's why the warfare, that's why they're opening your borders. They want to water you down to the point where you have no say so. They want to take your voting privileges away from you and give it to people who have no stake in this country. They have no history here. They have no allegiance. At all. And in New York City, they just gave 800,000 illegals the right to vote. They want to do it across this nation. That's an icon city that what goes on there is supposed to spread nationwide. And that's exactly what they want to do in right good old Knoxville here now. Don't you believe anything else? Well, I don't believe it'll come here. Wake up. The only place you got to live it out is here, guys. If you're a resident here, be one. Well, what goes on there doesn't matter. It does matter. Yes, it really does because there's a plan. A nefarious, evil plan. And it's a play for the world. This is the biggest play that Satan has ever made against God. Just as it was in the garden, Satan made a play. And he's been making the play ever since. And he's finally got enough cooperative people to mount a mass attack. And everything from the virus to the economy to the political nonsense, the shenanigans that's going on, it's every bit a satanic play to take the world. Well, that's extreme. Yeah, I'd say. Is it exaggerated? Nope, not in the least. And the only thing that stands between him and doing it is a little old bunch like us. The people who call on God and get on their knees and pray what Jesus said to pray Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And as we pray for God's will to be done in the earth, their plans and purposes are thwarted. There's one that gets in your prayer closet with you and says, what do you want me to do? You say, well, God could do it anyway. He didn't say he would do it anyway. He said to pray. His will be done. That's exactly how the light shines in the darkness. We bring to naught their schemes, their deviance. It gets exposed. It gets brought out. And you see it everywhere. I mean, you see it. I mean, they're being brought out everywhere. You say, well, I don't see it. I know you listen to the wrong wrong sources, but we've not seen half of what's coming. He said in verse 21, and then if any man say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, there he is, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders and shall do, if it were possible, even the elect. He said, but take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all these things. Amen. Now notice what, he said here, he said, there are certain things that you're going to see, the conditions that are prevalent during that time. He says, there'll be false Christ. That word Christ is anointings. There'll be false anointings. There'll be anointings for evil. There'll be anointings that look good, but they're not. Some of that has to do with religion. Some of it has to do with false religions, even in the name of Christian religion. You got to have discernment. You've got to be able to pick it out. The only way you can pick it out is to know the word. 
you don't know the word, you're subject. Well, how do I learn the word? Well, how about reading it? That's a good place to start. You know what you need to be scriptural? Scriptures. I mean, it's amazing. Amen. So false Christ, false prophets. And so there's a religious deception that goes on. Then you see a spirit of seduction. He said deception or seduction. Seducing, he said, that's a deception. He said, that's a, that's a, that's a temptation that seduces you to believe something other than what it is. Now, he said that during this time, there'll be false Christ, false prophets, and raised up to seduce even the people of God if they can. But he said, if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. So the deception is strong, but he did say this. Now this, this is encouraging to us. He said, if it were possible, this deception would be so strong that even the elect would be deceived. So therefore it's saying that the elect by the help and grace of God can't be deceived. So they may pull the wool over our eyes for a little while, but we pulling the wool off. We're making some discoveries. We see them for what they are. We see them for the evil that they, that they be. Amen. And so the elect, and there's two elects in the Bible, as I shared earlier. That's Israel and, of course, the church. And in our case, we'll just refer to it as the church. Amen. Because the elect of God, primarily Israel, when you see that prophetically, that's primarily talking about during the tribulation. Primarily, not totally, not all the time, but mostly when you see it in prophetic scripture. Okay. And it says, during this time, we are the elect of God, the church, the born again. It says, if we pay attention to God, hang close to God, that we cannot be deceived. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 59 and 10, I don't have time to go through these verses very much, but it says that the world is groping with no eyes. They stumble at noontime. Well, that's not us guys. We're not groping. We're not stumbling. You see in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, it says the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. There's, so there's a, there's a force out there that attempts to blind people, but that force does not have control and power over you. That force wants to deceive the world and it's at work, but it has no power over you. Arise, shine for your light has come. Gross darkness may cover the world, but not you. Amen. Say, not me. Amen. We see in Ephesians 4.18, it says, Having their understanding darkened, they're alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. You're not blind of heart. You've received Christ. But the world is blind. Don't expect them to suddenly get a revelation because they're not going to get it. They have to have the revelator in them to get a revelation. Amen. 2 Timothy 3, 7, he says they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Learn, 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 and know nothing. But tell you, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I came to a conclusion some time back. If we're going to talk about opinions, mine's as good as yours. Now, if you want to bring me facts, that's different. But you better prove them. If we're talking from an opinion point of view, I can opine as well as you. <laughs> Amen. And I think you need to trust your opinions. That's probably the instinct of God rising up inside you, showing that's just void that. Amen. Amen. Luke 18, 34. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. Neither they knew the things which were spoken. You, you, when, you, when you see truth is hidden, why is it hidden? God will not reveal his truth to those who cast it underfoot. Truth is sacred. Truth is holy. Truth must be honored. And if you're frivolous with the truth, you will have no revelation. The truth was hid. Luke 12, 56, ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you not discern this time? 
See, so there is a power of discernment, the ability to see beyond the natural, ability to see in ways that the world can't see, doesn't see, won't see. We find these passages of Scripture over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and beginning in verse number 1. Now the verses, the, the end of chapter 4 is talking about this catching away of the church. We're caught up together with the Lord to meet Him in the air. Then it goes into this revelation here then in chapter 5 verse number 1. It says, but of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. And the season that he's talking about is the season just prior to Jesus coming for his church. That's the season that's directly being referred to in that passage of Scripture. He said, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes at a thief in the night. Now, there's two comings of the Lord and I'm not talking about the Bethlehem coming, that's one, but I'm talking about the second coming, that's, there's a part A and a part B. Part A, he comes for the church. Part B, he comes with the church. When he comes for the church, he comes as a thief in the night. When he comes with the church, every eye shall see him, every eye shall behold him. You see him from east to the west. He splits the Mount of Olives in two as he steps down on it. So that's a that's a illustrative coming. Everybody can see it. Everybody can behold it. There is no mistaking it. But when he comes as a thief in the night, it's for a different reason, for a different purpose. And that's when he catches out the church. That's when he takes away the church. All right. Those are seven years apart. And in between that is what we refer to as that tribulation. First half of the seven years, the tribulation. Second half is the great tribulation. Two parts to that. All right? That's another sermon for another day. But I'm just trying to give you perspective on the verse, on the passage. He said, for when they, who's the they? That's the world. It's not you, it's not me. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction coming upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Well, all you rapture people are just saying, you, you, you're, you're just preaching escapism. Well, Luke 21 says, pray that you be account worthy to escape all the things that are coming on the earth. So you call it escapism all you want to, but that's a scriptural passage. And if you think, I don't want to escape, you're kidding yourself. I do want to escape the things that are coming on the world. But it says they won't, but we will. If words mean anything. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. What that means is all these things that are signs related to the Lord's coming, you're not in the dark about them. You're not in the dark at all. It says, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So we know he's coming as a thief, and we know it's probably soon because all the indicators are here. You say, could it be tonight? Could be. Be fine with me. I'll spend New Year's in heaven. Be all right with me. All right? But it's coming. He said, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. And you're not in the night nor in the darkness. So when that darkness comes, it's not us. The darkness comes on them. doesn't come on us. So we're the pillars and ground of the truth. We become the expression of God's truth in the earth. What God wants to do, He's going to do through His body. What Jesus' will is, is going to take place through His body, His people, His saints, His chosen ones. His light will shine upon you. The world is dark, but they have to have a light. And you are the light. Until Jesus appears and comes again, you are the light. What God does in this earth, He does through His body. We are co-creators with Him. His will is done on this earth through us. And we can't be neglectful. We can't be forgetful. We can't be lackadaisical. We cannot be out to lunch when it's time to report for duty. We can't be sleeping on guard. We can't be asleep at the wheel. We have to be diligent, strong, firm, and faithful. And some of our brethren, 
through all the lockdowns and mask ups and whatever else, they've lost their zeal, they've lost their fervor. Well, I can't because. Well, why don't you get some courage? Why don't you get you some backbone about you? The Bible says they love not their life unto death. Well, I'm afraid. Well, I just answered that, didn't I? <laughs> You've not yet resisted unto blood. That is in the Bible, you know. What are you living for? Well, I'm living, you know, for the, for the time that we, get, we get back to normal. No, you're not. You're supposed to be living your life for the Lord. Whatever in, in, may come or may not come, your life is still what it is. And you were put here for a reason, and you were put here with complete foreknowledge when you were put here of what was coming. And in your lifetime and in your scope of influence, you're to spend every day. Don't leave anything on the table. You spend this life for God. All of it. Well, I don't know if I could do that. Well, you need to get some resolve about you. You know, we're coming into a time making New Year's resolutions, and we're making resolutions about things we're not resolute about. If you don't believe that, wait till the second week in the gym after all these people went and joined. Along about February, it's back to normal. You get a big influx in January. All the people got their Christmas memberships to get rid of their Christmas party. And in February, everybody's back to normal. I've seen it for years. I joined, I joined the gym the first time when I was 14. So I've seen the seasons and the cycles go in the gym. Okay. And I go now just like I went then. It's part of my life, part of my routine. It's what I do. You say, well, I can't tell it by looking. Well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. We don't always like the truth, do we? But uh, anyway, I did say that, you know, a little while back. Amen. But verse 4, But brethren, you're not in the darkness that, that should, they should overtake you as a thief. You're all the children of the light and the children of the day, and we're not in the night or the darkness. Now listen to this next verse. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. Be on guard and be sober. That's what I'm saying. See, we've got to be sober-minded, and we've got to be on watch. We've got to show up for duty. It's not time to be fearful. It's not time to be asleep. It's not time to be preoccupied. It's not time to be caught up in the world. It's time to be caught up in God. It's our time to be discerning, prayerful, sober-minded, cautious of false narratives, have our moral compass intact, Stay connected to the body, the family of God, the Bible, the truth, right relationships. High time. Amen. So it's a great time to be alive. And God's master performance right now is underway. Knowledge is increasing. We're seeing if we're looking. But what are you looking at? Are you listening to the false narratives? Are you listening to the wrong news sources? Are you listening to Hollywood propaganda? Are you listening to the propaganda of the media? Are you listening to a fascist form of business that supports all of this stuff? Are you playing the game? Or are you standing up? Because it is a game. There'll be another chapter of it. They'll write another one. All the things that come out, they prove to be false again and again and again and again and again. But what do we do? Do it again. When are you going to get a clue? When are you going to stand up? Now, I only have influence where I have it. So I can only exercise it where I can exercise it. So I'm not scolding you. Because I don't know, you know, these, these numbers, 
that we reach monthly through this. They're, they're, those numbers are off the chart. Tens and tens and tens of thousands of people. So we may be visiting for Christmas, but there's a lot of people out there that listen to this stuff. So we talk to a lot of people. So we got to say it. So it might not fit you, but it might. So I'm not scolding you. I'm just talking to you. And I'm trying to influence you for the right things and for the right reasons. Guys, you're it. God didn't have somebody else to call on. You're the one. Well, I want him to call on somebody else. Well, I tried to talk him out of that myself, but he didn't choose anybody else. I'm here. So it's a great time to be alive. His master performance is going on right now. Satan is being revealed in space. The cover is coming off. Knowledge is increasing. He's being exposed, guys. And he's a fool. If you watch the people he uses, you think, are you kidding me? A leader? I don't even believe they put the two together. This is a leader? This is a moron. I didn't call names, okay, you know? So the church's greatest hour is at hand. And don't be intimidated out of your place. Again, where we started, Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and great darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lay hold of that passage of Scripture more now than we ever have in our entire life. You let your glory shine on your people. You let the courage of God, Almighty God, rest on your people. You let the strength and power and the character of the Holy Spirit come through your people in a way that it's never flowed through before. Father, this world is in gross darkness, but in the middle of that, you've raised up an army of the righteous, an army that stands up and makes a difference, an army that's here to be counted, here, here is an army that is not going underground. We're not pulling away. We're not running in terror. But we're going to stand up on the wall and we're going to be those watchmen on the wall that take our place and do not break ranks. For right now we're uniting arm in arm. Shoulder to shoulder we stand. We march in lockstep together. We're going to do your will in this earth. And Jesus, you're going to be glorified and you're going to harvest this earth through a people that look like the world has defeated them, we're going to show them that the one who is with us is greater than the one that is with them. Your will will be done in the earth, and the angels of God shall go forth and bring it to pass. And we declare it, and we believe it. In Jesus' name. Now, if you're listening to me today, either here in the room or you're listening online, and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I would certainly do it today. You see where we're at. You see the timing that we're in. No greater time to say yes to the Lord. But if you're here and you're listening and maybe you say, well, I'm saved, Pastor. I know that. But I'm walking in a half step with the Lord. I'm not fully committed like I ought to be. Well, you can change that today too. So if either one of those fits you, let's pray this prayer today. Pray it with me. Say, Jesus, I take you today as my Lord and my Savior. I commit my life. I recommit my life to you. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. I repent of that that would sidetrack me. I repent of sin. Jesus, you are Lord. Thank you, Father, for hearing me when I pray and receiving me in Jesus' name.